Hey Shane, this is Eric, or Viking Guitars, you probably know me. You can see it says it on my shirt. Um, this is a video tutorial on some of the basics of recording. We're not going to get into a really in-depth thing because there have been entire books and video series and stuff written about it. So I'm just going to give you enough to get you started, get you up and running, so uh, you can do a bit more than what you've been doing already. All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, some of the software you're going to need. Um, first off, I recommend Reaper because it's essentially free until you decide to purchase it, and it doesn't uh, have any screwball little things in there to make it uh, a problem until you purchase it. Um, so if you go to http colon slash slash reaper dot fm, you uh, have the Reaper homepage here. You can click on the download button here, select your operating system. One of the other things I recommend with Reaper here is if you ever need any help, if you go to forum.cocos.com. Cocos is the company that makes Reaper. If you go there, if it works, they have an extensive forum that will pretty much answer any questions you have, including a... Um, under the newbie land section here, they've got some stickies about home recording for beginners, um, the Reaper manual, and all sorts of cool stuff like that. The other thing you're going to need is uh, ASIO for All. It's at asioforall.com. Basically, what uh, ASIO is, is it's an audio interface um, that's designed specifically for uh, sound recording. Instead of using the uh, standard Windows sound drivers and um, the path that takes, ASIO bypasses all the Windows stuff, so it allows whatever program you're using, like Reaper, to interact directly with the sound card so it doesn't have to go through all these other layers of software junk and it uh, reduces latency. Um, if you don't know what latency is, latency is the time it takes for you to play something like a note on a guitar and for the program to recognize it. Um, if you have a long latency, there's going to be a delay between when you play something and when it actually gets recognized by the sound recording program, and that's all sorts of bad because it screws up your timing. So you want a low latency, you want ASIO for all. Um, if you're using some other uh, specific sound recording sound card, uh, it should come with its own ASIO thing, but for now, you'll need those two things. The other thing you're going to need is some sort of interface for um, how uh, you're going to get the sound into the recording program. I use the Line 6 Tone port and the specific one I use is right here. This guy right here. Basically it's just a way for you to plug into this thing and for this thing to get into the computer so you can record. You can do the same with the microphone like you've been using and just isolate the audio track. Once you download everything you need, get ASIO for all installed and Reaper installed, you're going to open up Reaper and it's going to show you a screen pretty much like this. Um, Quick rundown of what, you, what you're looking at here. Over here are some basic tools like new project, open, save, uh, you've got your metronome, uh, snapping, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, down here in this area is where you're going to have your individual audio tracks listed. Over here you have your timeline, um, and if you use your scroll bar over here um, on your mouse, it'll uh, increase or decrease the range you're looking at. So basically, each one of these is a measure or a bar, so that's one, two, three, four, and so forth, and then down here you have your individual beats. Now, as you can probably tell, this is set up in 4-4 four, four times, so you have your first beat, second beat, third beat, fourth beat, and then a new bar. If you want to change that, you can go to File, Project Settings, and under Project Settings, you can change it to 3-4 or 6-4 or 12-8 or whatever. So let's just put it to 12-8 for now. And now you'll see for each bar, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and a new one. So that gives you a lot of flexibility with uh, how you want to do that. The other thing, too, is that uh, even if you have it set to 4-4, you can change it later on and at any time. So this is your uh, chronological timeline. Down here, you've got some basic information, your position in the song, your control for rewind, play, pause, stop, fast forward, and record. Um, over here you have your beats per minute and your rate. The rate here basically is the play rate. You can speed up or slow down what you've already recorded based on that. And over here you also have your time signature. You can change all those things at any point within the song. Down here is going to be your master bus that basically shows your overall volume for the whole song. Um, and over here are going to be the same sort of little volume cues for your individual tracks as you add them. You can see it puts them down here also. Up here 
Um, this line of text here is going to be your sound card and driver settings, and if you click on that, it'll automatically open up your audio device settings so you can select your ASIO thing. As you can see, mine's running through my tone port here, so be sure to set that up before you get started. All right, so at this point, you're pretty much ready to start recording audio um, as long as you have your signal chain set up. Now, what your signal chain is is basically the whole path of things that goes from your guitar finally into your computer. So for you, it's probably going to be your guitar into your amp. That amp signal is going to be recorded through a microphone, which is going to be plugged into your computer, and you need to set up Reaper to record it. So what you're going to do is you're going to double-click in this empty area here to create a new track. If you double click on the title bar here, you can title it New Track. Now, this AR button here says Arm Record or Disarm. Basically, when you click this, it means that this is the track that's going to be recording instead of any of these other ones. Now, you can record on multiple tracks at a time if you want to, but just be sure that you've got the ones checked that you want. Now, as you click this button, you can see it brings up and removes this little box down here that says Send One. If you click on this guy and go to Mono Input, you're basically going to be able to select whatever input you want. Now that's going to change depending on what you're using and uh, what uh, input device you have, but just make sure that's set to what you want. It might take a few tries to get it figured out, but once you do, you're good to go. At that point, just turn on your metronome. Make sure you've got a tempo you want, and like I said, you can change it down here. Rewind to the beginning, and then just click Record. You hit stop to stop the recording, or the spacebar does the same thing, and then it'll bring up that dialog box and click save to save what you just recorded. And now you can see on your first track, you've got your guitar line. Now uh, keep in mind the uh, recording quality here is a little crappy because uh, my webcam mic is picking it up through my speakers, so it's not the best, but when you play it back, it sounds like this. So that's pretty cool. Now to record another track, turn off that one, turn on a new one, make sure you want rewind to the beginning again, have your metronome on, and just hit record again. Now you have two tracks, basically on your way to creating a song. Now the cool thing is about each one here is that you can control these independently from each other. If you want the volume on one louder, you can click the volume slider here. If you want to change the pan on each one, you can do that. If um, you want to add effects to a certain one, you can click this effects button. And I've got a whole bunch of effects here, but if you click on the Cocos button here, Reaper has a whole bunch of effects included. Like, uh, you can add some reverb, you can add some delay, all sorts of stuff. So let's add a bit of delay, and let's hit space to start it. If we click this button here, we'll solo this track so we don't have to listen to the other one. And you can change it so it solos in front, where you can still hear the backing track a little bit, or you can turn off solo in front where you'll only hear this one. So that's with the delay. It's a little bit uh, a little bit wonky right now because these are the default settings, but uh, let's lengthen the time a little bit. Let's turn down the wet sound, which is the sound of the effect, and now let's hear it again. Cool. So now when we unsolo it and listen to both. There's your song. Now you can go to File Save if you want to save it, or if you want to just make it an MP3 or a WAV file, go down to Render. You, um, set your sample rate and all that stuff to whatever quality you want. And down here in Output Format, you can do either WAV or MP3. Uh, to do MP3, you need a lame encoder, and if you just Google search that, uh, you'll find one that works. It's not too hard. So we'll set it to MP3. We'll set it on the desktop as Test. Click Render. 
It'll render the whole thing out. We can close this guy, close Reaper. We won't save it. We'll close all this stuff and show the desktop. This is a fat squirrel. And if we click on test here, there's our your MP3 file. So that's basically it in a nutshell. Um, those are the bare bones of the recording process. Obviously, there's a lot more you can do to make it sound better, different, learn our, all sorts of cool stuff like that. Um, as you get going with this, I encourage you to not limit yourself. If you hear something in your mind and you want to make it happen, find a way to make it happen. Those Reaper forums are really, really good. It's a great resource. Every time I've had a question, I've posted it in there, and I've almost always had a working answer within a day. Also, I've used Reaper for about three years now. I'm pretty aware of a lot of the ins and outs with it, so if you have some question that you're having trouble with, feel free to send me an email, and I'll get to it as soon as I can. Um, also, if uh, you do Google search for free VST, that's VST, Victor Sam Tom, free VST effects, you'll be able to find a lot of free chorus, delay, um, distortion, cool little effects that you can use uh, once you get your uh, sound into Reaper to put on top of it, make it sound cooler and different. Um, I recommend putting effects on in Reaper instead of recording it with effects through the amp because let's say you record something through the amp with delay and then you want to cut it off at a certain point. That delay is going to cut off at that point since that's the recording sound that went in there. But if you record it dry without any effects from the amp and then put the delay on afterwards, you can cut the sound at a certain point and have that delay trail off. It gives you more control. So that's basically it. Um, I hope this helps and I look forward to some of the stuff you do with it. Keep listening and keep the world metal. <laughs>